I'm not going to read the whole lot. But it's such a beautiful verse, the whole chapter. We've been reading it, sharing it this year, 2024. The earth is the Lord's. I want you to underline the earth is the Lord's. And everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. In that two sentences right there in the word of the Lord, the earth and everything in it, he established. And I was drawn to not only the song, but the Hebrew names of God. Many of us have already been saying that a number of years. But I was looking at, you can see there, it's a bit of a giveaway of the word in that the Lord wanted us to um, to go on. He established everything in it. And um, the earth, everything and established. Earth, everything established. So the Lord had me going through the E words. Just go back to that one there again, Deborah. Hello, he is Israel, the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to Okay, I want us to go to Ger uh, Genesis 33, 20. This is when uh, Jacob met, meets Esau. But let's pick it up in verse 20. This was when the altar was set up for the Lord. It says, there he set up an altar and he called it El Elohi is Rael. There it is. You can find also the scripture of that in Exodus verse uh, 5 to 1. The next interesting one is El Roy. Is that one? Did you that one? That's what I gave you, Al Roy. Okay, Al Roy, the God who sees me. Interestingly, let's look at Genesis again, chapter 16, verse 13. This is the story of Hagar and Ishmael. The God of Israel, the God who sees. So Genesis 16, <laughs> this fan is gone. It says, this is the name that she gave to Ishmael. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. But she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. And you know, right throughout women in the Bible, Women of God that just, you know, give the commitment, dedication of serving the Lord and, and, and sharing the message. That's what God is beginning to do even more. He's, he's releasing an anointing like Deborah and Esther to the women of nations. And he sees as what he saw through, you know, when Ishmael's name was given that name, 
God is the God who sees. He's the God who, who heals. I now have seen the one who sees me. How special that is. And also, when you look deeply into it, it says, I have now seen the one who sees me, the God who numbers the hairs on our heads and counts every tear. God sees the struggles. He comes alongside of us. How should I? God Almighty, Genesis 17, verse 1. When God revealed himself to Abraham, it says, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Al Shaddai means God Almighty, the all sufficient one. And he, Abraham, walked before the Lord. He was faithful and he was also blameless. In Genesis 35 11, I am Al Shaddai, be fruitful when he spoke to Jacob and multiply. El Olim, alone. There it is, the everlasting God. Genesis 21, 22 to 34. Abraham planted a, a tamarisk tree in Besheba. And it's a place where that has an anointing, I believe, on it. It's a place where God's called us. It's the place there of, of the patriarchs. Abraham's well is right out there. And... Uh, I remember in 2003, 2004, we were out there, we were praying around this well, Abraham's well that's spoken there of, of, in Genesis 10, 26, when Isaac had to redig that well. And uh, the story is, short story, I'll be quick. I had the Aboriginal flag, I had the Australian flag, and I had the Torres Strait Island flag. We were standing and praying that the Lord would move by his Holy Spirit. A gush of wind came, and I had those flags, and other people had their flags. And it's like these flags where the strong wind nearly blew them into the well. And I quickly grabbed those three flags before it happened. And uh, I said, Lord, what just happened? And it's like the wind of God's spirit just began to um, uh, just blow. It was a stronger um, blowing of the Lord more than often. So I caught those three flags before they went into that well. And when the Lord spoke to me, he says, I'm going to, I'm going to send a move of God through the nation of Australia. And, and we know that there's been prophecies over our nation, you know, years of prophecies over our nation. But for me, uh, specifically, that the Lord says he's going to send a move of God and it's going to... It's going to uh, tape and it's going to just shape and it's going to hit the Torres Straits like never before. It's going to hit the Aboriginal communities like never before and the, and the greater of Australia. And so we need to allow God to see a, a move of God's Holy Spirit of, of, his, of, of this well. We hope as well is that the Lord will make room for His Holy Spirit to move like never before. And so that's the, the everlasting God. The Hebrew word for olam means for a long time, always, forever. And you can look at scriptures of Isaiah 40, verse 28. Isaiah 40, 28. I just want to take you to, to these scriptures. Now I've written them down. It says, Do you not know? Have you not heard the, the Lord is, ever, is the everlasting God? The creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow weary. He wouldn't sorry, he will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Then he goes on. I love that. He gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Also Psalms 90 verse 1. Also Isaiah 9 6 talks about everlasting God, the Prince of Peace, the government of God. Allow him. Mighty one. God most high. First Kings eight twenty three. 
Psalms 97 9. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Elohim. So when you begin to pray, I know many of you are probably using those words, but as you begin to use them, it's just like when we when I'm out in the streets or we're praying in here, we say Yeshua HaMashiach. Because that's the Hebrew word. People, you know, that say Jesus, praise God. God loves them all. And importantly, as they're serving Him and honoring Him, but when I'm out in the streets, I use the Hebrew name of Yeshua HaMashiach. El Onion, the Most High God, Genesis 14, 8 to 20. And uh, we know that as the, as the God who, who um, we'll go there, Genesis 14, verses 18 to 20. It says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine and this priest of God most high there it is, there's the word El Elion and he blessed Abraham saying blessed be Abraham Abraham, by God most high creator, creator of heavens and earth and praise be to God most high who delivered your enemies into your hand then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything the king of, of Sodom said to Abraham give me the people and keep the goods for yourself but Abraham said to king of Sodom with raised hand I have sworn an oath to the Lord God most high creator of heaven and earth that I will not accept nothing belonging to you not even a, a thread or, or the strap of a sandal so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing but what but what by men sorry, but what my men have um, eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me to Anna Eshkel, um, Mamre, let them have their share. The one more that we never had. Al Gabor, that's it. Mighty warrior. Mighty warrior God. All you intercessors that are there and you're praying in the spirit and a warfaring anointing coming over you. Call out to Al Gabor, the mighty warrior. God is a mighty warrior, he is a champion. Mm -hmm. and you know, we are so blessed to be that knowing that Yeshua HaMashiach is our captain. We're on a good team. You're on a good team. You're on a champion team. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. Praise God. We're with God. Yeshua is our everlasting, eternal captain. We stand and we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mm. We know our God and we are on His team. Amen. If God is for us, who can be against us? He spoke all creation into existence. Let it be. Let it happen. We know our God. As, that, as the book of Daniel says, we know our God. We know our King. Just in closing, I'm preparing, uh, as Deborah gave uh, such a, a wonderful communion, of the the camera and the, and the photo of uh, a photo uh, symbolic of Jesus, passion for Christ. You know that, that photo that was, was taken. And uh, you know we need to allow God to develop your mind, the picture that He has for you, the vision, the dreams that He has for you. I've just started in the last, actually yesterday, I was going from uh, place to place to find some canvas, a blank canvas that's just painted white. And a project that the Lord's called me, called me to do is to, um, as we have now set up uh, Indigenous Friends of Israel, we know internationally, we, we launched it in Melbourne, 
2017. The call, the sense that I'm, I'm, I'm um, believing that God has spoken to me is to, to do this painting on a two meter. To be actually 18 meters by two meters, 1800 by two meters, <laughs> not a two by two meter a canvas. And it'll have the, it'll have the star of David, and I'm. I, I'm praying that the Lord will give me the the dove representing the Ruach Kadosh. Around it will be just patterns that will uh, depict a certain band, boundaries, uh, land, sea, and uh, I'm going to base it on these scriptures. And you can write them down. Psalm 72, verse 8. You know how all these demonstrations have been saying from. From, from the um, sea to the river, from mm -hmm. the river to the sea. Psalm 72, 8, may he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. See, this is how we've got to grab God's word, take hold of God's word, and what's been said, and see the goodness of God come about. For truly we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that's what I'm basing this canvas, this piece of canvas that I will be... Um, are putting together and also on the back of it I'm going to I want to see it internationally I want to just see also people from all over saying I stand with the God of, of, of um, Abraham Isaac and Jacob and I don't I, you know just have to believe that there will be uh, people that will help um, bring this um, into fruition and I, I the sent was to present it to government and I just have to just see what the Lord's going to do with it. Because He ordains the steps and He shows the ways. But uh, I know that I'll have it done. I thought, I, was, I thought we might have to have been on the plane by the 25th of January, 24th of January, and present it then. But it gives me a little bit more time. And I know that I'll be working my like day and night to get this, um, this done. The other scripture is verse 9 of Psalm 72. And it was a scripture that the Lord's given us when we were at Uluru. It was a 2005 conference in the heart of our nation and um, God was doing, or he was doing uh, prophetically uh, a heart operation in the nation. And when we see that big rock there of Uluru, you know, we stand on a higher rock than that. Because Jesus is our rock, he is our saviour. And we go higher and higher and deeper and deeper into a higher rock than the one we see in the heart of our nation. So 70, Psalm, 70, Psalm 72, and it was just verse 9 out of that same one, 72, 8, that will be based on. So I'm saying this so you can pray. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. So I'm bringing it, as I said, as we call it, indigenous friends of Israel, but we know that God has brought, see, each one of you here in this place, you might not come from a tribe, but you are aligned with the line of the tribe of Judah. So you identify, you are aligned with the tribe of Judah. So you have to say, when people say, oh, I'll come from a tribe, yes, I'm aligned with the line of the tribe of Judah. And uh, Amen. so we need to take hold of that. We need to, to hold fast to what God is saying. The desert tribe, not only the 12 tribes we, we speak of, and Jacob and his any, any sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, but the tribes all over the nations. And I always prophetically align and pray, just as the prophetic significance when we had those tribes here, when we had Avi and uh, the Mishraki family with us, we had the map there, and we began to just declare and decree that uh, our tribe that we come from, we align it with the line of the tribe of Judah. And see, you are saved, you are born again, you are filled with God's spirit, so you come from a tribe. So when anyone asks you, what tribe are you from? You say, yeah, well, I'm from the line of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to rule. Mm -hmm. You can take hold of that. And so may the desert tribes bow before him. And you know, that was one of the things that I pray even now, I'm standing and you would have noticed that this was the map that we took out and it has um, uh, like uh, lots sort of painting, and we had this in the heart of our, in Uluru for our conference. And there were many of the tribes that came together. There was a lot of repentance that took place in the heart of our nations. But even now, 
we, 2004. 2004, we prophetically and prophesied that the tribes will align themselves with the line of the tribe of Judah. And uh, the other scripture that the Lord has given me, which was that one there, Psalms, based on Psalms 122, that is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. And, uh, you know, if we, we're looking at... Uh, we're looking at what the word Judah means, it means praise. And so praise must go first. Praise to the Lord, to the to the line of the tribe of Judah. It must go, go first. Amen. Ezekiel 36, 24. And I believe that this, this gathering in Sydney is a big seed than what you and I can imagine. In Ezekiel 36, 24, it says, I will gather you and take you from the nations. I will and gather you, I will take you from the nations, from all the countries, and bring you into your own land. And I, I, I know that that is beginning to unfold even, even more. So I, I sense that, that you'll pray in a different way. That as you've written those words in Hebrew, El Oyon, El Gabal, um, El Roy, God who sees, El Elohim, Israel, the God of Israel, that your prayer language will be even more and more different, different. and it will be so significant, significant that it will it'll bring about a, a, a breakthrough strategy for you more and more. And I remember that um, some of these other banners uh, that, have been made, that have been made over the years, and that song, it has other... There are other words, but I picked out the E words in that. Did, were you able to get that song? That's all right. That's all right. So strategy, and all those that are listening, I, I pray that this Australia Day, the 26th, Lord, you know... We all love this nation. We want to see this nation come into all that we have. We want to see our government change or be transformed, that this government will just get on its knees and, and serve you and honor you. That what we are seeing is, Lord, is, is, we, we know is not right. Lord, your, your ways are just and true. Lord, you can change the hearts of man you can change the hearts of people the way that they are. We only have to see where Saul, before he had a name changed to Paul, and he was someone, Lord, that um, persecuted the church. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And a blindness came upon, um, upon him. But Lord, we know that there is that natural blindness and there is that spiritual blindness. And we ask and pray, Lord, that the veil will be lifted of our nation. Amen. And that men and women will see you and they will stand before you and Lord repent of their sins and their ways. I pray Lord for a spirit of repentance to come upon our nation. I pray for a spirit of repentance to come upon our city. That Lord that you can change people to where they are. Lord we only have to look at the throughout the Bible. How you change men and women Lord that served you. And Lord, that they walked in different ways before they met you. And I ask and pray, Lord, that you are, nothing is impossible for you. We pray, Lord, that every curse that's been put in our nation, you can reverse. As we come before you, Lord, wholeheartedly and repent, turn from our wicked ways, as the book of Second Chronicles 7.14 would speak to us. And Lord, I ask and just pray, Lord, that we personally will look before you. And we will bow, Lord, before you. And honor you and exalt your name, Lord. And lift up your name more and more and more. We ask and pray, Lord, that you turn our nation, that it becomes a sheep nation. That it, that it will be a sheep nation. And Lord, bring us to that place of this nation truly being reconciled to you first. And every tribe and every language and every people group, Lord, I pray. Just as Jonah, Lord Jonah had his ways, he went down wrong, 
the wrong path. He jumped on the, on the wrong boat and on the wrong ship. But Lord, that there are those that also that are jumping on the wrong ship. But we ask and pray that they will, Lord, come to you, know your lordship, know your kingship, know your rulership. And we ask and just pray, Father God, that help us all to, to Lord, just to serve you. Not waver between two opinions. We say and we stand and we agree and we say, as for me and my house, all we will serve the Lord. Or as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you.